Amen. Clap your hands and possess it. Believe it. Receive it. How many know it's your season? That you are in a blessing season. That due season has indeed come. It's on the way. And this is your season to be blessed. We thank the choir for that. Evangelist Ida for leading that song. All of the voices that the Lord has brought together into our choir, to our music ministry, blessing us on this morning. It is our season to be blessed. And we receive that, that blessing from the Lord. Amen. Thank you, choir, for that. Again, uh, Trustee Terry and his leadership there. Trustee Terry was dancing uh, on that song. Indeed. I didn't see that until just this morning. So that's a blessing unto us all. Amen. Amen. It is a, a blessing to dance on the word and to receive the blessing of the Lord. At this time, uh, we are honored. We are excited to present to some, to introduce to others. The pastor of Zion, Pentecostal Church of Christ, will take us further into the service and into the word of the Lord. Let us clap our hands and give the Lord a praise for his manservant, Bishop C. Wayne Brantley, at this time. Thank you, Elder Lipford. God bless each and every one of you. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Why? It's your season to be blessed. It's your season for God to open up that gargantuan window in heaven and pour you out blessings that you won't have room enough to receive. It's your season, amen, for God to anoint you and God to gift you with the very treasures of heaven what a wonderful opportunity it is for us now to show forth the praises of he that has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. To each and every one of you, I'm grateful that I can meet you in 2021. So grateful that God has been kind and gracious and merciful unto us. Yes, we still have challenges. Yes, there are still problems. But God is able to give us victory over every challenge, every problem. He's able to heal us from all sicknesses and diseases because that's the promise of God. And of course, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? Shall he not do it? Has he spoken it? Shall he not make it good? He's already given a commandment to bless. And the Bible says he hath blessed and he cannot reverse. He cannot turn back what has gone out of his mouth because it will do what he said and it will prosper in the thing whereto God has sent it. Uh, uh, we're yet praying for the conditions of the world. We know that COVID-19 is escalating. Lives by the thousands are being lost every single day. Uh, uh, the, 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 the vaccine that was supposed to be rolled out is not being done like it should be. People have been spoiling it. Uh, one, one report said a man uh, thought that it wasn't effective. So over 500 uh, of the vaccinations, uh, he immobilized and destroyed. Uh, I think that's because the enemy is trying to deny the power and the authority and the healing of our God. So we have a lot to pray for, praying for the McLean family. Uh, Amen. In the loss of uh, Brother McLean's brother-in-law, his sister's husband, I think his name was Michael Howard. Saw so many others that had lost loved ones in the chat room. I want you to know, though, though we're not calling your names out, we are not forgetting about you. We're indeed praying for you that God would strengthen you and the God of all comfort would grant unto you the peace that surpasses all understanding. We want you to know that you are not alone, you are not forgotten about, and we are indeed praying that God will minister to you not only individually, but he'll minister us corporately, that his will can be forever wrought in our lives. Uh, well, it's a wonderful day, it's a great day, and we are thanking God that he's allowed us to be partakers of the promises of God that are yea and amen in him. Every day, that we wake up according to Lamentations, uh, chapter number three, verses 22 and 23. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning and great is thy faithfulness. So we certainly love the Lord and bless him. And I'm so excited as we enter into the second phase, a man of our foundational messages for the beginning of the year of 2021. Uh, the year of more, the year of more. Let's get ready to go into the word of the Lord. And if you would turn with me in your Bibles, amen, to two passages of scripture. Uh, the first will be found in the book of Romans chapter 13. 
and we will read verses 1 through 3. Then we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 33, and verse 40. Again, that is Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. Then 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 33, and then singularly again, verse number 40. It is a blessing to read uh, from the Holy Writ of God, for in his word there is life. Romans chapter 13 and verse number 1. The Bible says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Romans chapter 13, verse number 33. For rulers are not a terror, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, rulers are not a terror, verse number three. Rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. It says, wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Now jumping to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter uh, number 13, verse number 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. I believe I said 13, I believe that's 14. Uh, verse number 40 in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. For a few moments this morning, I would like you to think upon the subject there must be order for more. There must be order for more. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Dear kind and gracious Father, once again, we take this time to express unto you our deep and profound appreciation for the uniqueness of this privilege and indeed this honor to call upon your matchless, your incomparable, your majestic, the magnanimous name of Jesus. The only name that we know that the righteous can run into and be safe. Your name that every knee shall bow and every tongue should confess that you are Lord to the glory of the Father. God, bind us together in a spirit of, of unity and harmony and love. Speak, Lord God, to our spirits and to our souls that your word might find good ground, good soil to be deposited into, that it may germinate and grow into the measure and the stature of the men and women of God that you have called us to be. Father, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor because it belongs unto you. These prayers and blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. There must be order for more. Remember our base scripture, brothers and sisters, our foundational scripture is found in the book for the theme this year, Deuteronomy chapter one and verse number 11. The Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as ye are and bless you as he has promised to do. Uh, brothers and sisters, last week in our message, we dealt with the M for the year of more being that of manifestation. We talked about the fact that there are two Greek definitions for manifestation, the first being phanerosis and the second being apocalypsis. The first translation is the word phanerosis, which means exhibition, expression. Uh, it means a bestowment and deals more with light. And the second translation that we talked about is the word apocalypsis, which deals more with being revealed from behind a veil or whatever is covering or obscuring your manifestation. 
We then came to the revelation that there cannot be manifestation without first having impartation. In other words, you can't see, you cannot experience, brothers and sisters, you cannot have revelation or manifestation what was never there in the first place. And furthermore, even though you may have had an impartation or a bestowment, it will not be effective if it is buried under a lot of stuff. I then identified stuff, S-T-U-F-F, -F, as an acronym for suppression, for trouble, unbelief, fear, and failure. Lastly, I left you with the command to stand up. Stand up as Saul finally did and divest or strip yourself of all of the stuff because you are taller than you think. As we continue, brothers and sisters, with the theme of 2021, the year of more, the intention of the entire world is now focused squarely on what has become the spectacle of the divided states of America rather than the United States of America. Former President Barack Obama said that the violence that gripped the U.S. Capitol on Wednesday was the unsurprising result of two months of instigation by President Trump and all of his enablers. So, as I began to process the events that played out uh, before the world, we were all witnesses uh, to a historic day meant, brothers and sisters, to celebrate the certification of the electorate votes of all the states of America that then spiraled down into a deadly insurrection of misguided Trump supporters who stormed our nation's capital, which ultimately ended with the death of five individuals. And because of the cowardly, callous, and divisive rhetoric of a deranged and egomaniac president, the United States will wear the ignominious stain of a deeply divided nation who is radically out of order. Paul writes in Romans chapter 13 and verse number three, we just read it, for rulers are not a terror to good works but to the evil. In other words, we should not be tyrannical, egotistical, and maniacal in those that we have been chosen or elected to rule over. But we should do it to the evil and not to the good. He says, wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. In just a few short days, our country will be rid of the tyrannical terror that has been an unhinged dictator during the last four years. I don't think that it was by accident or happenstance that the chaotic and deadly insurrection launched against our nation's capital by ill-informed and poison-fed zealots coincides with the O for order in this the year of more. Clearly we are living in a time where the church must be the light of the world. The church is a city that is set on a hill whose light must not be hidden under a bushel of shame and laziness and incompetence, misprioritized agendas, jealousy, unforgiveness, and the lack of compassion and love. As people try to make sense out of senselessness in reference to what happened in Washington on this past Wednesday, many scholars have weighed in with their opinions. A man by the name of Larry Diamond, senior fellow at the Hoover Institution at the Freeman Spogley Institute for International Studies said, what is actually occurring is the product of years of disinformation and rising extremism and a defection from democratic norms fed by the support and the indulgence of President Trump 
and other politicians. Uh, uh, Stephen Stedman, a senior fellow at the Freeman Spogli Institute said, what is happening now has been part of Trump's strategy since he was elected in 2016, which is to cast doubt on the legitimacy of the electoral process. The fact of the matter is that truth and justice are being attacked on a daily basis and they are succumbing and surrendering to the vicious assault of a mountain of lies and deception. The word of God says there is nothing new under the sun. Therefore, the same terror that we are experiencing today, the prophet Isaiah writes about it in Isaiah chapter 59 and verse number 14 when he declared, and judgment is turned away backward and justice stands afar off for truth is fallen in the street and equity cannot enter. If ever, brothers and sisters, there was a time when the body of Christ should be unified in mind, spirit, and purpose, that time is right now. And I believe, and I firmly believe, that the order in the church, the body of Christ, must set the precedence for the entire world. I want to speak about the importance of order in the process of manifestation. When we look at the definition of order, it means an arranging, a fixed succession of a course or that which is sequential. In other words, the number two follows the number one. The letter B follows the letter A. The month of February follows the month of January, et cetera, et cetera. In our text for today, we are told to let all things be done decently and in order. The passage of scripture is not just dealing with keeping things neat and tidy, and it is not about being rigid or stubbornly traditional, but it deals with reflecting the character of God because God is not the author of confusion, disarray, or commotion. Therefore, obedience is required when dealing with the order of God as demonstrated in the commandments and the law of God according to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 1 through 9. A portion of that scripture says, Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land, whither thou goest to possess it. In other words, God is saying, if you do not obey my commands, you cannot possess what I promised to give you because you did not obey me. Therefore, the first thing that must be understood when it comes to order in the house of God is that order begins with obedience. Jesus said in John 14 and 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. In other words, love to and for God produces obedience. It is impossible to love God supremely without a supreme desire to please him in all things whether you see it or not, whether you understand it or not, whether you agree with it or not, obedience is part of order. What many in the body of Christ don't really recognize or understand is that obedience is one of the hidden weapons of our spiritual arsenal in warfare. Brothers and sisters, obedience, therefore, is spiritual and not natural. That's why the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, verses 4 through 10. He said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, 
but they are mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds and casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Christ and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And here's what I want you to focus on and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Somebody say obedience. Uh, in the gospel of Matthew chapter eight, an unnamed centurion, which means he was a captain over at least 100 men. He understood the importance of obedience that is tied to order. He approached Jesus on behalf of one of his servants that was sick with the palsy. Jesus told the centurion that he would come and heal his servant. But the servant told Jesus that he was not worthy to have the master come up under his roof, but rather speak the word only and his servant would be healed. Brothers and sisters, but the thing that I want to underline is how the centurion showed that he fully understood both obedience and order. The centurion told Jesus, for I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go and he goeth, and to another come and he cometh. And to my servant do this, and he doeth it. Let me reiterate it again. There can be no real order unless there is obedience first. You may not shout on this message, but God says, I've got to walk you through so that you can get more before the end of the year transpires. Please understand this obedience, though, will cost you. Obedience is not free. Obedience will demand sacrifice. Obedience will demand servanthood. Obedience will cost you. Even Jesus was not exempt from the cost of obedience. When you look at Hebrews chapter five and verse number eight, it says, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Uh, a lot of people want to reign. A lot of people want to be on the top, but not a lot of people want to suffer and have to get down to the grassroots uh, of serving uh, and understanding. It's not always going to be joy in the morning, but there are going to be times that you're going to have to travail in order to step in to the promises of God. Uh, the Apostle Paul writes in Philippians chapter number two and verse number eight. He says, and being found in the fashion of a man, meaning the figure, the likeness of a man, Jesus humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. This scripture is in direct reference to the obedience of Jesus to the will of his father. Remember, it was in the garden of Gethsemane when Jesus was praying that the cup of suffering and death would pass from him. But he concluded his prayer with the words, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Oh, hallelujah. Therefore, our obedience to God must be universal because partial disobedience is complete disobedience. James 2 and 10 tells us, for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. I want you to understand today that God is a God of order. If anything is out of order, when God speaks to the issue of or even thinks about the issue in a corrective way, uh, chaos, confusion, and anything that is in disarray is immediately brought back into the alignment and the conformity with the mind and the will 
of God. Therefore, the key to the order of God's house is that he is the architect who provides the plans and we are the builders responsible for carrying out God's directive for his house. Anytime we stray from the Lord's imagination for our lives, then we are declared by God as being out of order. Listen to what Jeremiah 29 and 11 says. He says, I know the thoughts or plans that I have for you. You have to throw out your plans. You have to throw out all of the architectural mechanisms that you have put together and get the plans of God for your life. Uh, not what mama wanted for you, not what daddy wanted, not what somebody standing up, amen, in the galley wants you to do, but, but what are the plans? What are the thoughts? Uh, what is it that God has for you? Uh, he says, I'll tell you, I have thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. God is more concerned about how we end rather than how we begin. In Ecclesiastes chapter eight, seven and verse number eight, the Bible says better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3 and 9, for we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry and ye are God's building. I just come today for a few moments to encourage you that the order of the average church, here it is, is mirrored in the behavior of the average father in his home. In other words, the order of the church and the home is grounded and rooted in headship. Though Jesus Christ is the head of the church, the pastor is the responsible agent for the growth and salvation of the church. Second Timothy 2, 1 through 5 says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Why do we do that? He says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. People will have itching ears uh, trying to run to and fro uh, in order to fulfill uh, the inconsistencies uh, and the lack of obedience in their lives. Uh, they will hitch or uh, itch after the Bible says uh, uh, things and teachers uh, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth uh, and shall be turned in to fables, to lies, to things that will try to stroke your ego, brothers and sisters. He said, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist and make full proof of thy ministry. Paul then wrote in 1 Timothy 3 and 15, he says, but if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou ought to believe and behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. Brothers and sisters, when there's order in the church, it's not 14102 Harvard Avenue, but order in the church is what we carry around with us each and every moment of our lives. So the head is essential and a vital member of the human body. It is the most elevated, influential, crowning and ruling organ of the body. And from the throne of the soul, the head then issues mandates to the body. It impels its motions and controls and regulates all the members of the body. 
Therefore, the head is responsible for the health of the body. The church cannot go anywhere that the head does not go. So the head of the church holds the mind of God and the vision of God for the people of God. Therefore, it is important that the body does not hinder the head from taking the body where God desires for it to go. That is why the scripture emphatically states in Deuteronomy chapter 25 and verse number 4, and also in 1 Timothy 5 and 18, Thou shall not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. Hebrews 13 and 7 says it like this, Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves. Why? Because they watch for your souls as they have to give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable unto you. I just rose to tell the church, it becomes the pastor's responsibility to watch for your soul. Some of the things you're going to hear me say in 2021, it may not agree with you. It may not feel good. It might hurt. It might cause you to hang down your head. But everything that comes out of my mouth, everything that I do for the glory of God is to make sure that I bring you to heaven and that you don't fall short of the glory of God that God has mandated for your life. In order for us to manifest, there must force be order. Somebody shout order. Your child of God, in this the beginning of 2021, God has instructed us that if we are going to receive more, we must get back in order order. Huh? Now the church that I'm referring to huh, is not just a physical location of brick and mortar as I said earlier but it is the church that Jesus said he would build upon the rock huh? and the gates of hell huh, would not prevail against it. Huh? The church he was talking about huh, is the body of baptized believers. Huh? That's why the apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verses 19 and 20. Huh? He said, what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, uh, which is in you, uh, which ye have of God, uh, and ye are not your own. Why? For you were bought with a price. Uh, Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. If you feel like I feel today, let's give God some glory. Let's give God some praise. Let's lift him up. Let's shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Wherever you are at, let's get back in alignment so that God can be pleased with our coming in and are going out. God can be pleased with our praise in the city and our worship in the field. God wants glory out of your life and God will do what is necessary and what is needed to extract his glory out of you. The glory is not of ourself, but the glory is given by God. So if God comes to take some glory out of you, it's going to cost you. Sometimes it's suffering. Sometimes it's going without. Sometimes it's misunderstanding. Sometimes it's loneliness. But when God comes for his glory, God's going to lift you to another dimension. God's going to step you into a room where the blessing of the Lord which maketh rich and he adds no sorrow to it will overtake you, huh? will overtake you and cause you huh? to lift up hands and give God the best praise that 
church of giving him all week long. Somebody right where you are, stand up on your feet and put your hands together and give God a crazy praise. Give God an extraordinary praise because God is putting us back in order. Shout glory. Hallelujah. The foundation of order. The foundation of order is repentance. I want you to understand that today. You cannot have a tail of dysfunction wagging behind you. What do you mean by that, Pastor? There's some folks before you proceed in the year of 2021, you need to go back and apologize to them because sometimes we think that days and years wipe away, amen, the offenses that we have perpetrated against other people. So God is saying in order for you to move, order has to be restored in your life with your relationships up. When we look at order, it starts with repentance. That's why Hebrews chapter six and verse number one tells us, therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of what? Repentance from dead works and faith towards God. Repentance from dead works tells us we must confess that which has not and never will be profitable in our lives. Sometimes you have to swallow your pride. Sometimes you have to go down. Amen. In a position of subservient attitude and mindset. But the Bible says you have to repent from every dead work that tried to take your life in 2020. And before you can move to the promises of God and what God wants to do in your life this year, you must have repentance in order to get back into the place of your anointing, your power, and your giftings that God has for you. When I look at the Greek word for repentance, metanoia, it means to think afterwards, to think again, which then means it implies change. Meta means after. Noe means to perceive. Consequently, repentance always deals or means to change for the better. I found out in, in this year of 2021, before we can experience the year of more, the order of God must be restored in our lives through repentance. Uh, brothers and sisters, it can happen no other way. Uh, remember the Lord said in 2 Chronicles chapter number 7 and verse number 14, if uh, my people who are called by my name uh, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and then I will heal their land in this year of 2021 our paradigm must be first things first somebody say it first things first Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 33, uh, but seek ye first the kingdom of God uh, and all of his righteousness, uh, and then all of these things uh, will be added unto you. Uh, when the body of Christ is in order, then and only then does God bless uh, and promote outside of the sequential order. Let me say that again. You may have missed it. When you are in order, when we are in alignment, when we are walking in the steps that God has given unto us, 
then God, it pleases him uh, to step outside uh, of what he has created called sequential order. Uh, and when God steps out of sequential order, then he doesn't do things chronologically or numerically, uh, but God does it according to favor uh, and not sequential order. I don't want you to miss that. Uh, Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 19 and verse number 30, uh, but many that are first, uh, they shall be last. Uh, and the last shall be first. Why is that? Because those that were last uh, found themselves uh, in a position of lack and wanting. Huh? And when they looked around, they said, I've been out of order. Huh? And once they got back into order, once they repented, huh? once they labored before God, huh? once they went to their brothers and their sisters, huh? and they said, I'm sorry. Huh? Once they started reading the word and fasting huh? and supplicating before the Lord, huh? those that were last, uh, the Bible says now become first. Uh, the thing with order in God uh, is that in God uh, there is no order at all. Uh, when you look at Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse number 13, uh, the Lord said, uh, I will make you the head uh, and not the tail. Uh, thou shalt be above uh, and not beneath. Uh, if thou hearken unto the commandment of the Lord, in other words, uh, if you obey me, uh, I'll take you from the back of the line uh, and put you in front of the line. Uh, I'll take your application uh, that is on the bottom of the plow and I'll put it on top uh, because you have been obedient uh, and I'll bring order into your life. Uh, somebody shout glory. The order for more in 2021 is that God must be first. Somebody said God must be first. Not your husband, not your wife, not your children not your house, not your job, not your finances. When you put God first, he says all of these things are shall be added unto you. The problem that we have, we put everything in front of God uh, and justify making him third or fourth and fifth in our lives, then have the audacity and the unmitigated gall to criticize God when he doesn't do what we ask him to do. How would you feel if your child, your husband, your wife uh, put you at the very back of their priorities uh, and then you look up for something when you have not treated them right. Somebody shout glory. Order. Order. I said over and over again. We should stop making the statement. I have other things to do. Besides. Go to church and serve God. That's true. But what order are you putting it in? Proverbs 8 and 17 says, I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. The word early comes from the Hebrew word shakar. From its root meaning, it means dawn or the beginning of the morning, dawn, first thing, which by implication means first or before consulting or checking with anybody else, seek an answer or seek consultation from the Lord, from God first. God does not relish the fact that you come to him after you went to James, John, Bill, Mary, he does not relish that fact because you have consulted in him last. 
I know we sing that song and there is a lot of truth to it. When you've tried everything and everything has failed, try Jesus. Why do we have to try everything else first? And then when we have no other alternative, no other option, we try Jesus. That is out of order. There can be no manifestation if we make God last and not the very front of our lives. Oh, hallelujah. Anything that we put before God is out of order, whether it's our work, whether it's success, whether it's materialism, whether it's our image. Let me stop right there for a moment. We are now in a society that is overcome with personal image. We are living in a time where people will get on Facebook and change their image and then are looking for somebody to tell us, there ain't nothing wrong with it, but looking for somebody to tell us, girl, you look good, man. You look young. You still got your youth. Where'd you get those clothes from? Where'd you get, hey man, that necktie from? We are caught up with image. How many of us put a picture of God? How many of us put a picture of fasting? How many of us put a picture of something that glorifies God? but we'll be caught up with our image on Facebook and Instagram and the things that we value the most. And there's nothing wrong with having value because we'll post our children. We'll post that dish that we just made and we want everybody to look at it and say, that looks so good. How many times have we posted something about Jesus? Or do we just post when we need somebody to pray and a tragic thing has happened and we call for people to pray and say, don't let this this, 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 this thing pass from you. If you are in agreement, post it, uh, copy it, paste it to show you are in agreement. But what about Jesus? I told y'all, y'all might not shout today. But God told me there will be no manifestation. There will be no more unless we get back into order. From the pulpit to the back of the church, nobody is exempt from order because everything about God is order. We have to get our house back in order. When you look at what the Lord told Hezekiah in 2 Kings chapter 20 and verse number one, he said, it's time to set your house in order. Of course, we know that Hezekiah he was warning him that his life would soon be ended on the earth. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that before God can do what you've been praying for, before God can do what you've been fasting about, before God can do what you've been laying on your face prostrate for God to answer, he said you have to get your house in order. Jesus said, the Lord said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. But you know the thoughts that you think about you and everything around you. Your thoughts must get back in alignment with God. Brothers and sisters, it's time for the church before we go any further in the year of 2021. There must be repentance. There must be asking God for forgiveness. We cannot, as I've already said, skate on time. Because now we believe that it's been so long ago that they've forgotten about it. It's in the past. Everything and everybody may forget, but God doesn't forget. That's why it becomes important that we make our peace calling and election sure with God. I'm just trying to get us to look inwardly, circumspectly, 
to say, is there anything that I have said or done that would disqualify me for more? For more. That would disqualify me from manifesting. Have I gotten all of the stuff, the suppression, the trouble, the unbelief, the fear, and the failure out of my life? Or am I still holding on to something? And believing that if I get far enough away from it, it will not bother me again. That's a trick of the adversary. That's a trick of the enemy. In order to move forward in 2021, we must settle our debt in 2020. How many can say, I love everybody. I don't hold anything against you. One of the best things that perhaps could have happened in 2020 is that you don't have to pretend anymore. When during the welcome, we would get up and say, go hug your neighbor, go grab their hands and tell them I love you with the love of the Lord. And you knew if you wanted to be truthful, you couldn't go to everybody in the sanctuary because you could not say it. Brothers and sisters, there must be order for more. And how do I get that order? As I've said every single week, how am I brought into the family of God? Of course, we have used the example of Nicodemus who came to Jesus by night and asked the Lord, what must I do to be saved? How can I enter into the kingdom? And Jesus responded, you must be born of the water and of the spirit. Nicodemus, of course, asked the question, how can that happen? Can a man enter into his mother's womb the second time and be born? Jesus said, no, 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 Nicodemus. It has to be water baptism, immersion in water. And it has to be the infilling of the Holy Ghost. If today you have never had that unique experience of giving your life to Christ, or even if you have done so and you find yourself estranged from your relationship with the Lord, this is your day. Don't wait another moment. Don't wait another second. God wants to save you. God wants to deliver you. God wants to manifest who you really are. And God wants to do something that will blow your Holy Ghost mind. This is your time. This is your opportunity. On the screen, there's information that allows you to get in touch with us. And there'll be ministers that will answer whether you email us or whether you call us. Our email is zpccprayer at gmail.com. Our phone number is 1-888-ZION-220. With all the numbers, it's 1-888-946-6220. As you see on the screen, a minister will promptly and confidentially respond. And if you desire to be baptized, we'll make those arrangements for you and we'll do it, amen, according to the guidelines of the CDC for social distancing and making sure, amen, we are not spreaders of this heinous virus. We've baptized during, amen, the pandemic and we've done it with the spirit of excellence and with the spirit of caution, and no one that we have baptized has contracted the virus. That's because I don't believe that God would tell us to baptize in his name and then allow somebody who was being obedient to his word to contract this heinous virus we call COVID-19. Brothers and sisters, on the screen now, want you to avail yourselves. I want you to call in now and allow the Spirit of God, amen, to lead and guide you. For the Bible says, as many as are 
led by the Spirit. They are the sons of God. Let the Spirit lead you. Let it guide you. Let it order your steps into the presence of the Lord. Let's pray now. Want to pray for you. Want, want to pray with you. That whatever it is that the enemy is trying to monopolize your life with. Whatever it is the enemy is trying to cause terror in your life with. Whatever it is the enemy is trying to make you fearful of. I've got a remedy. I've got a panacea. I've got an inoculation of blood that will keep you and preserve you from whatever the devil is trying to destroy you with. Come on, let's pray now. Dear kind and gracious Father, once again, we count a privilege and an honor that you would allow us to stand in your presence and to call upon your name, that you would allow us to do as your word has commanded to come boldly to your throne of grace and to lay our petitions, our needs, our wants, and our desires before you, knowing full well that, God, you would supply all of our needs according to your riches in glory. We come now, Father, binding the work of the enemy in order that the spirit of freedom, the spirit of praise and worship, the spirit of your power, God, could reign supreme in the lives of all of those who are in need of a touch from heaven. God, I pray now for those that are sick, those that are battling COVID-19, those that are on respirators and ventilators, those, Father, that cannot even find a hospital bed because our hospitals are, and our IC units are overrun. Father, I pray, Father, that you would breathe into them now the breath, your breath of life, God. Reinflate their lungs. Remove the contaminants out of their body and let them feel the refreshing of the Lord that they might recognize it was you and you alone that brought them out. Not a vaccination, but it was your mercy and your grace that covered them. It was your blood that saved them. God, I pray even now that those who are running around carelessly as super spreaders, God, give them a conscience, give them an awakening, give them, Father, a knowledge that we must mitigate this disease, this virus, and do it the right way. Cover us now with your blood. And everyone, Father, under the sound of my voice that wants to be saved, let there be a launching path. Let every obstruction, uh, everything that is keeping them from moving in to your glorious place of salvation, obliterate it. Cause it to be destroyed. That they might have free access into your presence and into your grace and into your salvation. Now, God, Cover us with your blood. Honor us with your divine presence. And Father, we'll give you the praise. We'll give you the glory and the honor. Because it belongs unto you. These prayers and blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord smile upon you. Listen, it's not going to be like this always. Many of our members have been meeting along with myself and others as we prepare our entrance back into the sanctuary. And when we come back in, we don't want business as usual. We want there to be a fresh anointing, a fresh approach, a new understanding of the call that is upon our lives and a new endowment, a new bestowment a new manifestation that will come out of you that people who you've seen for the last 25 years won't even recognize who you are because of the manifestation of God that is happening in your life. I love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. I look forward to seeing you sometime further this week, especially in our Bible class. 
Amen. I've got some things that God is sharing with me that I want to share with you as well. This time we will turn, amen, the services back over into the hands of Elder Brandon Lifford for our oblation, our offering, our seed of sowing into this ministry. Thank you, and God bless you. God bless you, Bishop. Thank you for the word. Let's put our hands together, saints, for the word of God today. Mm -hmm. Let's appreciate God for speaking to us this morning. Yes, the man of God, there must indeed be order for more. And we receive it and say amen to the word. We thank mm -hmm. the Lord for it. We want to, as pastor has said, provide you the information so that you may give your offering and your oblation unto the Lord. We're going to ask Mr. Mary Fitzgerald to come at this time and to give us that information. All right. Praise the Lord, everyone. Thank God for today. Thank God for that message about being in order. Thank you, Bishop, for stepping on my toes today because I need to get everything in order. And I thank God for being able to give. It's definitely a blessing and an honor and a privilege to be able to give a sacrificial offering unto the Lord. So Zion, you already know what to do. You know the four ways that we give. But if you are visiting with us today on social media or in our virtual sanctuary, this is how we do it here. The first way is through a credit card. If you would like to give that way, please call either number on the screen, Sister Shelly Knight or myself will be available directly after service. Uh, we put your information into the app and you receive a receipt immediately. The second way that we give is through Givelify. If you already have that app, then you know what to do. Just go to Zion Pentecostal Church of Christ, where Bishop C. Wayne Brantley is our pastor, and you should see his picture as well as his lovely wife, Minister Darlene Brantley. The other two ways to give is to either mail or drop it off. Our address is 14102. Harvard Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio, 44128. Please do not give cash, wrap up your gift, put it in an envelope and write um, what you, how you would like for those funds to be designated. We thank you in advance for your giving. We pray prosperity upon you and blessings in Jesus name. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you, Minister Mary for that information. And we reiterate that we appreciate and thank you for the support and for your generosity in advance. At the bottom of your screen, you will also see the phone number for Sister Rochelle Miles, 216-240-6332. If you or your family is in need of food or some assistance with some basic necessities, Zion wants to be there for you and support you and your family. So if that is you, uh, reach out to us at 216-240-6332. Let us know how we can help and be of service to you and your family, and we will do so in the love of the Lord and in the name of Jesus. We want you to know how much you're loved and supported here at Zion and a part of this great body of Christ uh, here in Cleveland. So God bless you in advance for, again, your generosity and your support. God has been so good to us, and it has been a good thing that we have been here in this sanctuary. As Pastor mentioned, we will be back on Wednesday uh, at 6.30 p.m. with our prayer service uh, that begins uh, the evening of worship on Wednesdays, and that's followed by our evening Bible class. Join us, uh, Zoom and Design here in this sanctuary. Join us on Facebook, and let's dive deeper into our study of the word of the Lord as we move forward in this year more. So join us, and we also invite you next Sunday uh, to, to join us for Sunday school and begin your day of worship uh, in the word of the Lord. We have some tremendous teachers and our adult Sunday school begins at 9 15 a.m. It is followed by our children's church, uh, which is designated for our young people at 10 15 uh, a.m. Uh, an exciting time for our children to learn about the Lord and to study his word. And then our service once again reconvenes at 11 o'clock a.m right here in our Zoom sanctuary. So God bless you and thank you for being uh, with us once again. Uh, back to you, Pastor, at this time. Thank you again. And to each and every one of you, I love you with the love of the Lord and appreciate your sacrifice. I appreciate the attendance and I certainly appreciate your love for the word of God. 
that the word of God is food for our souls and those of you that have now become connoisseurs of God's word. That word is going to bless you. It's going to empower you. It's going to enlighten you because you are hungering and thirsting after righteousness as the psalmist writes, psalmist writes in 42 and 1, as the heart panteth after the water brooks or the deer panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul is thirsty for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before my God? It's when your hunger and your thirst for him drives you to the face of God. Let's go before the Lord in prayer and let's end this service with a covering for each and every one of us that I can see your smiling and your victorious faces once again when we meet on Wednesday and then pursuing to Wednesday back here again on Sunday. Father, once again, we honor you. We love you. We magnify you. We worship you. We praise you. We adore you. God, we adhere to your tenets of the faith, God, that we can gain more, God, because there is more for you to give us. You declared in your word, then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. Your unveiling, Lord God, to us, uh, your downpour, your bestowment on us, uh, only promises to get greater as we draw closer unto you. Now, Father, I pray for a covering over everyone under the sound of my voice, not only those who can hear me now, but their families, Father, their loved ones, their friends, uh, that, that kind of concern will be magnetic. It will draw more men and women unto you to be saved. Now, Father, protect us as only you can do when we leave for our jobs, when we shop in the grocery stores, when we're outside in the elements. Though we have masks on, God, there is an additional covering and protection that only comes from those who are under a blood covering, a mystery covering of your mercy and your grace. Uh, bless us and keep us. And by my word and authority, I dispatch angels around every home, every house, uh, every person, all their possessions, God, that you can keep them uh, as you promised you would. Uh, now, Father, we thank you. We praise you, we magnify you, we glorify you because you're God and you're worthy to be praised. These blessings we ask now and forever in Jesus' name, amen and amen.